Hi, and welcome to the Game Changer Show. As you know, on 28th's new AI slash gaming project will be exclusively launched at Cityfy. Shockwaves is an online blockchain game designed to deliver an unparalleled gaming experience through its innovative blend of AI-driven NFTs, algorithmically generated cities, and music-infused gameplay. Sounds interesting and very unique. In this AMA, me, Benjamin, and Samuel will be discussing features of this game that makes it must try for every gaming enthusiast. Stay tuned and watch until the end. Shockwaves. Shockwaves. Hi, Benjamin. Hi, Samuel. Hi. Hi, Hi Juliana. How are you doing? Good, good, and you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, actually, yesterday we already had a nice conversation about Shockwaves, and to be honest, I'm very impressed with the project. So today, uh, maybe you could share more with our audience uh, about the project, about the Shockwaves, and everything behind the scene. So, but first of all, could you please introduce yourself a bit um, and tell us a bit more about your background in gaming, in uh, Web3 space, in AI? So yeah, please. Yeah, sure. So we are uh, we, we are a team uh, of uh, of six uh, of six people, uh, mainly in this uh, office plus uh, two designers uh, around the world, and uh, we are uh, passionate uh, about uh, innovation and uh, mostly innovation applied to video game, which is uh, one of the domains who grow uh, so fast and uh, where there is a lot of technophile and early adopters. So we. I'm, uh, I'm Samuel, one of the founders and uh, mostly uh, at, at the beginning graphic designer of the team. And uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm the CTO of the company. I'm uh, working as uh, like mostly as develop for the development part for the for the gaming uh, and also the AI and also some of the, the tokenomics and blockchain. And and yes, I think we were like a team mostly of like engineers and kind of people were like always been mostly focused on the technology, on all the developments we've done before. We've always wanted to be kind of at the, the front of like what, what can be done in terms of like uh, technology applied to gaming. Like we've worked mostly like in VR before. Uh, we've made like, uh, we, we tended to make huge games all the time because we kind of wanted to push the boundaries of what could be done. And so I think that uh, when the Web3 came, I think it was, it really made sense for us to to, to be in this space because there is so much to to do for the for the gaming industry and now also with the, the artificial intelligence because we are we are a team we have actually two people who have done their master's thesis in art, artificial intelligence our team have also done quite a bit of it and I think so it's uh it, it really made complete sense to to link uh, our knowledge of like artificial intelligence gaming and web3 um, in a project that quite really fits together wow interesting. You're actually like super experienced team. So, I mean, everyone heard of Web2 Gaming, of Web3 Gaming, but this is something unique. This is Web3 Gaming integrated with AI. So could you please tell us more what inspired the creation of Shockwaves? How did you come up with this idea to create Shockwaves? Yeah, sure. So to, to begin with, uh, as we are passionate uh, about innovation in video game files, and uh, we we did a lot in uh, in VR, uh, and we we did some you know really ultra big games, uh, GTA like uh, online uh, giant with city simulation, and we was like after having done that, what should should, should we do? Uh, what should we do after that? And uh, we really thought that we nailed what we want to do in VR, and thought that uh, blockchain gaming was the new uh, the new boundaries, and uh, we we searched to. To do some things in this field, uh, we we found partners. We develop uh, with them to to learn more about uh, crypto because it was not our initial uh, landscape, and uh, and we did so much with our uh, on this uh, on this project that naturally at one point we were thinking, yeah, what? But we no, we feel like we we have something to do. We have so, something to bring, and uh, with the, with everybody uh, speaking always in the office uh, about AI uh, exchanging uh, ideas, we thought, but why why we don't combine 
combine all these things, AI, uh, gaming, uh, and uh, blockchain uh, to make, uh, you know, the, the new project with uh, too many uh, technology, uh, can, we, uh, can we do it? And we did some tests, and yes. Actually, yeah, and, and also it, it makes a lot of, I mean, it made a lot of sense for this project. The one thing we've noticed in, in VR is, and also in the blockchain uh, gaming industry, is that it's super important to, in a game, to have bots. Like, uh, you cannot have a game that is, uh, like, I mean, you can have a game without bots, but, like, if you have a game with, like, lots of people, there will be some times where there will not be enough players, and we cannot need to have, uh, to fill it with bots. And we, we thought that it would make a lot more sense to really put them at the forefront of the project mm -hmm. instead of hiding them. Yeah, and for the for the Web2 gaming aspect too, um, what we, we experienced the development of some metaverse for other companies, for corporate companies. And uh, what we really um, feel by doing this experience was the need of gamification in, uh, in Web3. You can't have uh, Web3 experiences if people don't want to join your world. And the best way to make you join uh, your world interesting is, uh, is making a good game. Right, absolutely agree. We need mass adoption for Web3 gaming. This is super important. Um, interesting. So could you please explain more on the game mechanics of the Shockwaves and how the AI-driven NFTs and algorithmically generated cities work together and how actually AI integrated in the gaming. I like I don't think many people understand that. I don't even think many people heard of it. This is something super unique. Yeah. So what uh, what you need if you want to integrate uh, AI, NFTs uh, and uh, all this innovative stuff into a game for uh, at the beginning is to to plan this. The worst thing you can do is uh, start your project and at some point thinking, wow, I should uh, add uh, a new technology, right? I don't really know and make it at the middle of my project. So what we, everything work, has to work together since the beginning. AI NFTs, algorithmic city, and of course the, the gameplay. So first we, we, we bring all this technology together and think what would be the, the best, uh, the best gameplay around that. So, we, uh, the game Shockwave is uh, an FPS where you have to destroy the base in front of you. For this, you are helped by, uh, by uh, other players and, of course, their AIs and your AIs. The, um, uh, the, the, the game takes pl place into, an, into a city which is always different. So the game renew itself at uh, all, the, all the game and uh, it's... Um, Sorry, I feel like uh, I hope you're gonna cut this because my uh, I, I'm searching my word in English. <laughs> but the the idea uh, to resolve one of the problems of the web free is uh, we want to keep player. So we make the generative city. So in one hand, uh, game are always different, so you are never bored of the game. And on the other hand, we can generate cities, so city will be uh, the lands that we can uh, that we can sell because there will be whole difference. So it's how we architecture uh, things to make them work for the web two and for the for the web three. The gameplay will look uh, a lot like uh, what you can see found uh, in a MOBA. Plus uh, the the music will play a, a really important role. It's something that has never been really done in the multiplayer FPS uh, scene, and the idea is to create not only a, a game that will be the first because it will be a web free and integrate token. It needs to be new in terms of Web 2.2, because uh, for, to be successful, we need to bring um, a lot of players uh, outside the boundaries of Web 3, which is still in a, an adoption position. So you need to be interesting for, uh, for everyone and bring innovation into the, into the gameplay in comparison of what exists in, uh, in Web 2. So it's where the gameplay working with music come from. So it will, the, the gameplay with music is really simple. It's just, uh, you have, uh, input from the music. You know, when the music is loud, uh, your weapon make more damage. So you have to time your action with the music to, to take the, the most advantage of any situation. I see. That's very interesting. So it depends on the music, how the situation goes in the game, something like that. 
But yeah, how the music appears? Like someone creating the music or it comes from AI? So we're going to have a list of music that will be already into the game. We decide this because we, we want to be sure with the right uh, to people don't impose the music to the others because uh, as the game player uh, is related to music, uh, everybody has to, to hear the same, uh, the same things. Right. So we need to have uh, read music to make them uh, interesting. And uh, yeah, you, we need to have the to have the right somehow. Nice. Yeah, and also that's that's a, an interesting opportunity also later on for the project to to make partnerships with uh, you know like in the music industry with like producers, artists, etc. I mean, actually, we were integrated uh, one of the music of uh, of one of our community member, a rabbit, who made some music a while ago, and it fitted with the game really well. So we just integrated it. And that's something we want to keep doing. So it's a, also a way for us to, to build a project with the community, with partners, etc. That's amazing. That's so cool. you're actually given chance to your community to join and to build, uh, to be part of the project. That's yeah. That's super important that you're listening to your community, that you give a chance to your community to prove yourself, uh, maybe even to become famous. Who knows? <laughs> sure. That, that's amazing. Uh, I also liked the part when you said that the game is always kind of different. It's never repetitive. You know, I remember one thing. Um, when I was a kid, I used to play a game uh, on my PlayStation. I think it was called House of the Dead. Uh, it's about zombie uh, shooter. You, you have to shoot zombies. So I was waiting for the second part for like a month. And when it finally was released, my dad, he bought me a game. And I was like, I was so happy. I was waiting for one month. And you know, I had this uh, gun for for my PlayStation. So I started playing. After 25 minutes, I finished the game. And I was like, at first I was proud. I was like, oh, I finished the game for 25 minutes. But after that, I was like, what am I gonna do next? I need to play, I wanna play more. And this is the problem of the games. Like what's next when it, it finishes? Like. What do I do? And here you have a solution for that. That game not finishes. It it has content. It's never repetitive. That's amazing. I, I wish yeah. I would have such a game when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that, we, we, with the, the way we we create the the worlds and like the cities and like yeah, with the music etc. There is so many things that are like unique that every game will look different. Exactly. And like yeah, the gameplay will be interesting. The, the look of the game, the feel, all of it will change, and so I think it will make it like not not repetitive, and also interesting for the AIs. Because what, one thing we want to do is like, I mean, we can maybe like circle back on that a bit later. But it's with the AIs, we kind of want to they, they will be learning as they play, so they will improve and they will learn some some aspects of the game, and we kind of want them to to not learn just like what are the places on the maps and stuff, which kind of want to have a sort of general understanding on like learning on the, the process on the, on the boats. And, and it will be, um, th so, so for, to, for this, I think it makes sense to have like many maps that are all unique and, and yeah, the, so the way, the, the way things fit, I think things fit, fit well together for this aspect too. Nice. Amazing. Um, next question I have. So we already spoke about uh, music-infused gameplay, about algorithmically generated cities. So could you please explain how AI-driven NFTs work in, in the gameplay and how are they different from traditional NFTs in a gameplay? Sure, sure. So what, what these AI-driven NFTs will do, basically they are like characters. So you can buy them. It's like uh, as you would buy in other Web3 game, you buy an NFT that corresponds to a, a character. But, but also, so, so you you can play you can play it like you can like uh, use it and stuff. But you, when you're not playing with it, it will also play by itself. And with uh, like a, you know an AI model, so it will basically uh, you know play and it will also evolve. So it will improve its skills over time. Um, it will have also its own personality. 
So for this, we use uh, like a complex language model for, for it to have like, a, you know, all these AIs, basically, they are like player. When you're not playing, they will be playing as by themselves and they will be equal to normal uh, human players. So so they, they will have like their personality traits. They will communicate with people on the chats of the game with their own personality. They will have nationalities. So, so it will, all, all this will make the game a lot more lively. And also you will earn a part of what your AI, the AI you own will earn in the game. So it will maybe it will it will play the game, it will gain a bit of you know currency, maybe not much, but and you will earn a percentage of it. And that AI will also earn some of it and it will spend it for itself. So it will buy itself weapons, uh, equipment, etc. And so it will kind of evolve over time. And you control it. I mean, you own it, but you don't. You cannot make decision for it. And all the weapons it buys, it's for itself. It's not stuff that it belongs to you. But it, it's for itself. But uh, as you win some uh, some part of what they win, uh, if it uh, improves its own equipment, you will probably uh, earn more. So your AI will uh, have more value. And if you want to sell it uh, or to buy an AI which is well uh, equipped, it's uh, yeah. It yeah. would make the market interesting. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that should also uh, that that could also drive some volume on the NFTs because uh, it will really make them interesting to trade. Because like some will have to be different, uh, some will be better than others at the game. But also, you know, there will be like kind of a beyond also the just the, the earning parts. It will like some will have different personalities, different nationalities, and stuff. So it it, it will make things things are really interesting on this aspect. Wow, that's super unique. Yeah, and super interesting. So my character will be improving itself, evolving in the game while I'm sleeping, for example, and also will make money while I'm sleeping, but also exactly. will spend my money. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's uh, that's pretty much uh, that, that, that's pretty much it. And, and also, I think th this is one of the reasons why we do that is that we, we've noticed that in Web3 games, there is often a, a pitfall of it that is that with some play, play to earn type of games is that a lot of the players, they kind of come just to earn. Uh, and so like, and the problem is that it's fine to have some people to just come for this, but we, we as like a, 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 a game economy doesn't really work because then you have people who just work nine hours a day they don't plan to to bring anything to the economy. They just kind of want to to earn and and just sell, sell the tokens. So it creates a lot of selling pressure, which is not really good for the project. And by having these AIs, they they, they would be owned by people who will actually also spend money in the game. The AIs themselves will spend their own token, like kind of their own tokens, in, within the the game economy to buy like weapons and stuff. And so uh, so I think it will be a more much more balanced and also a more sustainable game economy. So I think that that was also one of the reasons why we went to that direction of like AI-driven NFTs. Wow, interesting. Um, next question. So do you think AI technology will actually help uh, Web3 gaming in general and how it can improve and how it will work together in the future? How do you see it in the future? Uh, I, think, I think one of the aspects of it will be um probably through making experiences because when you have a game like in web3 especially web3 gaming you kind of need you need to have bots and you need to kind of fill these spaces and kind of usual bots that don't interact much that don't you know learn or cannot talk to people they are not super interesting and like you see a lot of like some even really good like a web3 project they've struggled with a player base, like user base, because I mean, sometimes there is a lot of hype and you have like tens of thousands of people connecting at the same time. Sometimes it goes low and sometimes it's not the hour where people are playing. And so we, we kind of need to tackle this problem. And I think some, some many Web3 projects haven't really been able to do so. And I think AI will be a big part of, of solving this issue of having basically people like kind of in not just bots, not just like NPCs that will have like a very predictable interaction, but to have like really full, like uh, kind of meta users that are 
that are artificial intelligence and that will behave like like normal people would. And yeah, I think that will be a big part of uh, of the Web3 ecosystem in the, in the near future. Right. That's going to be super interesting. So you will actually interact with uh, AI with bots, but they will act like real people, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Would it be able to make a difference, like if it's a real player or AI player? You know, game, I mean, like in, in Shockwaves, our goal is to make it, like make the limit between real players and AIs as blur as possible. So there is, I mean, we've noticed actually this in a previous game we've developed. Once, you know, if you have only AIs, sometimes you notice them. But if you have a mix between AIs and players, you never know which one is an AI and which one is a player. There is like the, the confusion, like, like people cannot guess actually, because you don't really know how it would behave. And also with these AIs that we're creating for, for shockwaves, they will be a lot more interesting than the... Uh, yeah, the, the thing that, people, that make people notice AI in general is uh, the repetition of their behavior. But this AI, uh, as they evolve, will be uh, really more uh, random for people. So it will be difficult for them to identify a pattern that make them say, oh, yes, it's an AI. I see. Great. Um, let's. Uh, you already mentioned about uh, token, about how users can earn tokens in the gameplay. So uh, that's very actually very um, important question for our investors, because uh, most of the people will participate in upcoming IJO that is coming on 28th of April. So could you please tell us a bit more what are the main benefits and utilities of Neuro Token and why why people should own it in your game in Shockwaves? Sure. So, so what, one of the main utilities of it would be uh, like as a simple payment token of it. So that's like a, one of the base utilities so you can buy things uh, in the game through this token, but also it will it will also be able will also be able to stake the neuros token, and by doing so you will earn some rewards, and there are like several types of rewards. So you will earn a bit of tokens, but the, the probably the more interesting thing is that you will earn some uh, loot boxes over time. Mm -hmm. So you will earn like periodically depending on the amount you stake, you will earn like some NFT rewards. And uh, one of the, the main one will be uh, with the we, we, we starting uh, we, we will start just after the the IC, the, the, IC, the, the IDO will start a, a free mint on these AI driven NFTs uh, where you will be able to some people will be selected for it but also one way to be whitelisted for these free mints is to stake your neuros token and uh -huh. so if you stake you are and you are about uh, among the, the the highest staker of the token you will have uh, you, you will be able to be whitelisted for this premiums of of these nfts and there will be other other events uh we're planning to do other events like that in the future and also like you know with other types of uh, types of nfts so so that will be one of the the, the big advantages of staking uh, uh, the neuros token. Nice, great. So if I want to get character in Shockwaves, I have to participate in the IDO, and after that, I need to stake my neuros. Correct? That, that, that's that's one of the main ways to do it. Yet. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now I know <laughs> how to get my character. <laughs> and how many how many um, uh, NFTs are gonna be? In total, there will be four thousand four hundred and forty four uh, character NFTs. Okay. So only 4,444 people would be able to join Shockwaves? No, actually, you will always be able to play. So mm -hmm. anyone will be able to play. You will just basically use another, like a, a, a random NFT that is not being used. And you will, um, but you won't earn much uh, if, you, if you're playing like that. Like uh, you, you, you might get a little bit, but it should it wouldn't be uh, nearly as much as if you were playing with your own NFT. So there would be a strong incentive to to buy to buy an NFT, but everybody will also be able to play the game, enjoy being part of it, and uh, so people can test it, can be part of the community, whether they own uh, an NFT or not. Got it. Got it. Okay. And the last question: um, What are the future plans? I know you already have a lot uh, 
in the game. Uh, so many integrations with the AI, AI NFTs, uh, AI uh, generated cities, and music infused gameplay. Anything else coming in the future? Maybe you can share. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of things that we are considering. I mean, there was uh, like we are trying sometimes to like since there are so many possibilities, we're trying uh, to stay focused at the start. But but we have so many ideas. I mean, there are like some of the things we want to expand more on for this project is uh, link with other communities. Mm. So we know there is like a very rich. Uh, you know, in the Web3 space between like the NFT communities, the token communities, there's so many kind of a win-win partnerships we can do with them. And we, that's something we want to, to foster. You know, there, there's lots of things we could give in the game, like game items, things that will kind of influence either the game players, things like that, but that could be given or like, you know, exchanges to, to so, some other uh, community like NFTs, or things like that. That's something we really want to do uh, in the future. We want to kind of expand in, in this direction a lot because I think it's it's kind of one of the dreams of the Web3 gaming and Web3 in general is to kind of bring communities together and uh, create things, uh, you know, that, that are beneficial across projects. I don't know if there is any other things you yeah. <laughs> want to expand on. Uh, but- yeah, no, I, I will not go, uh, but because when you speak about partnership with other community, uh, somehow we can dream about uh, integrate them somehow to, to our economy and mm-hmm. see how the AI driven economy can grow uh, because it's, uh, it's part of the project, but it's an experience uh, too. And maybe to complete about, um, yeah, if people can play without uh, NFTs, uh, for sure, yeah, they can play with, with, without NFTs, but they will not be really part of the economic experience of AI driven economy, which is one of the main uh, interests of the of the project and something I'm really interested to see how it will go because it's one of the first cases uh, where we can see this uh, in Web3. And uh, I'm really curious myself to see where it will go uh, at the end. Yeah, part, 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 yeah, that's true. Yeah, part, part of the dream of like having these, these AI NFTs is that there will be the first of the like the first goal that we kind of like pretty sure we'll be able to achieve is to to have the, the these NFTs being able to buy their own equipment from the game, you know, like uh, within the game economy. But one thing we kind of dream of, I mean, that's uh, maybe a long term goal. And uh, honestly, I mean, uh, it's hard to tell. Like maybe there will something will come up because I think nobody has ever done it before. Is to to kind of yeah go beyond that and go throughout like kind of having these NFTs, these AI NFTs have their own wallets and being interact, able to interact with the kind yeah, of the, the blockchain economy be, as a whole. Because they will win some kind of Noros. So if the Nor- when the Noros will perform well, they will be able maybe to, to buy some other currencies, uh, maybe to invest, to... Oh, it's difficult to know. Oh, yeah, that's like what, what will be the, the limits for that. But that's, uh, yeah. But it's a long-term plan. I mean, I have to, to put a disclaimer on this. Like, it's a, it's kind yeah, of a it, dream. We want, it's in like an experiment we want to do. Uh, I'm sure there will be some difficulties. I'm sure there will be a lot of opportunities that we we cannot even consider because you know there are so many people who no 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 one has really done it before. So it's uh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I see how ambitious you are, and uh, I'm pretty sure all your goals will come true. Sky's the limit. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot thanks a lot for this uh nice friendly conversation that that was very interesting and again uh that's something super unique i've never seen this before in my life and i had many interviews with blockchain gaming projects and this is something i see for the first time and i wish i will try it myself very soon and <laughs> thanks again i wish you successful launch again on 28th of April. Everyone should join IDEO and after that, uh, get free character for the show Quaves game. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
That's it for today's video on Shockwave's game. I hope this information was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section. If you're interested to learn more about Shockwaves, be sure to visit their website and socials. And don't miss the IGO date on 28th of April at CD5 Fund. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.